We are live. Welcome to Istanbul. We are live every Thursday at 8 p.m. We will be with you until 9 p.m. And uh, as Istanbul team, we open the new season in Radio X. It's our second um, show for this season, for this year. And today is an exciting day for us um, because today uh, Max will be in our studio. Max is here, sorry. Um, who is Max? Uh, I would like to know him more before uh, we go to the art topic. Uh, but Max is a professional runner, positive psychologist and transformative coach. He was with us uh, more than one year ago. <laughs> and we talk about the stop poor motivation. And today uh, we will talk about the our new year revolution but before the going to the topic i would like to give the microphone to max welcome to our studio max thank you Dugo. it's so great to be with you again really excited for this um so as you mentioned i'm a mental coach so i help people really build mental strength happiness in their lives as well as achieve their biggest goals and dreams and so as you said i'm, I'm really you know a psychologist a positive psychologist from training meaning i have a master's degree in positive and coaching psychology so mm -hmm. the signs of what really makes people thrive so how can we live healthy happy and successful lives and that's really what we're going to talk about today right mm -hmm. how do we actually make the changes that we want to make in our lives last yeah uh, exactly uh, with the new year uh, many of us already make the new year re resolutions uh, hoping to spark positive changes right um, uh, and uh, actually I would like to also start from the there uh, do you personally make the uh, new year uh, resolutions great question so I don't necessarily in my life think about new year's resolutions so what I do is I, I set a vision for my life for the next you know, five to ten years and then really break it down in smaller goals meaning yearly goals monthly goals weekly mm -hmm. goals and daily goals mm -hmm. so I don't necessarily you know start setting this process up on you know January 1st like mm -hmm. many people do mm -hmm. but I do have goals of course for for this year 2021 like most of our listeners probably yeah probably uh, actually first I would like to start with uh, one song uh, then I would like to hear more about the history uh, behind this because we talk with you and this is not just our generation uh, goals. It really comes from the history. Maybe we can go back to there. What do you think? Sounds great. And then we will be here with you again. After a song, we are here again. Uh, we listen um, uh, from Bill Con Conti going to distance why you pick that song max so this is one of the songs that's that's going on in, in rocky the rocky movies um i'm a huge fan of those movies because you know it's this true underdog story of a guy mm -hmm. that you know can't read can't write like he's he's not a you know very gifted talented guy and mm -hmm. yet you know he works his ass sorry butt off <laughs> no worries <laughs> to to really prove himself and and really make something out of his life did you also find with the, uh, did you also find related with the topic Yes, for sure. It's it's a great motivational song. I, I like listening to it while you know working out, for example, sometimes mm -hmm. um, because it really you know music is a great motivational driver, right? Just think about how music can really evoke emotions in our lives, right? It can make us sad, it can make us happy, it can make us also feel motivated. And so sometimes just picking the right song can really you know go a long way in helping us get off the couch and you know get moving towards our goals. I absolutely agree with you. I also really enjoy to uh, play song on the studio and also learn from the, our guests what they listen, uh, what they recommend. Uh, I always um, find really uh, great uh, to share music as well. And um, I would like to back to the art topic. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, how did people start making New Year resolutions? Oh, that's a great question. So actually it goes back a long time. So in ancient Babylonia, 4,000 years ago was the first time when, you know, it was really written down that people actually, you know, started thinking about, you know, how do I improve my life? How do I set new goals and stuff like that? And so then if we fast forward it, you know, to 2,000 years ago in ancient Rome, Julius Caesar in 46 BC introduced sort of this new, you know, the year that we now have, right? And then we now use. And so January back then for the ancient Romans was really the 
this time of year when they started making promises back then, usually to the gods, saying, mm -hmm. you know, I, this year I wanna, you know, I wanna be a little better. I wanna keep my promises. I wanna, you know, be a little kind. I wanna give a little bit more. And so to this day, this is really something that people have done, you know, really cultivated throughout the ages. And, you know, with that being said, really, with these 4,000 years of history exactly. as humanity really behind us in setting these resolutions, I think it's very sad that, you know, we still, you know, most people don't know how to actually, you know, set goals and then actually make them come true. So the latest science has really shown that, you know, most people, you know, 50% um, really of people when the new year starts set a mm -hmm. new resolution, a new goal for themselves. Mm -hmm. And by January 1st, meaning, you know, in one week from now, 80% of those people have already given up. And so yeah. today it's really about figuring out how to actually, you know, make these changes and make them last. Yeah, that's uh, that's a great point. And actually, what you say, this start from the four thousand years ago. And when I think about that time, it's mean the Neolithicum was there, agriculture was already there, people ha had settlement, uh, family, more friends, and there were society. And probably um, even after we talk about now today, you you also already mentioned we set the goals, we already break. <laughs> <laughs> probably after four thousand years uh, they will also talk about the similar stuff that's also <laughs> crazy but um yes maybe not same problems of course uh, but probably people still continue continue to put the wishes uh, and the goals um and that uh, how there is there any research about it how, uh, people who put the uh, uh, new goals on new year uh, how many people uh, will be successful about it. Yeah, that's a great question. So, so as I mentioned before, you know, by February 1st, 80% of people will have already failed at making the changes that we want. And at the end of the year, out of all the people that set New Year's resolutions, only 8% succeed. Only 8%. And this to me is really fascinating because we as a humanity have by now managed to send man to the moon and you know do all of these incredible things on this earth. But yet we haven't figured out how to just get off the couch and get moving outside or how to you know study a little bit more how to just do these basic things and i think it, it really comes down to these you know inherent laziness evolutionary speaking right we are built to you know procrastinate sometimes we are built to you know conserve energy if we don't use the right mental tools and techniques mm -hmm. and so that's why really getting clear on how we can actually make these changes is so vital because otherwise we're going to struggle over and over and over again mm -hmm. like humanity has done for four thousand years without actually making long-term change uh, and Bax, I have uh, another question about it. Why these all goals uh, similar for many people? What is behind uh, uh, their these decisions? I believe there's a few different reasons. So the biggest one probably is this, you know, cultural conditioning that basically says we have to be a certain way, look a certain way, do certain things in our lives mm -hmm. so that we can be, you know, accepted in society. We can be happy. We can feel good about ourselves. And so, you know, especially, you know, around this, you know, Christmas time when everybody goes crazy on snacking and eating a bunch of food, right? Yeah. Everybody starts to think of like their health, right? And like they haven't probably been moving in a while. So they're like, well, probably this year I should finally you know get moving finally you know set some exercise goals go to the gym go running especially right now right when the gyms are closed and so that's when people <laughs> really start thinking about this stuff right and so i think it really is hugely a part of cultural conditioning and really a lack of awareness in like what actually intrinsically motivates us like what would actually inspire you to make this like what would make this year a great year for you that's really I think the fundamental question that we have to ask ourselves not you know so we can look good in front of other people but so we can actually have have an amazing life that we would love uh, yes um, but I would like to highlight that part do you think people really ask themselves or people just check to the society and uh, uh, put their goals according to that which yeah. one do you think? That's a great point. Yeah, unfortunately, most people, I think, I believe truly really don't reflect enough to really be aware of what they actually want in their lives, right? So many times when I run workshops, for example, around happiness, around goal setting and ask people, do you have a vision for your life? Do you have goals? Mm -hmm. Most people will say, ah, sort of, kind of, maybe a little bit. But <laughs> most people don't have crystal clarity on the different areas that matter to them, whether it's the health and fitness, whether it's their impact, their work, their relationships 
relationships, what they want the happiness to look like, the mental strength, what they want the adventure mm-hmm. you know, in their life to look like. So really getting clear on like what would that ideally look like for us is really the first key to making sure that we actually set goals for ourselves and New Year's resolutions for ourselves that are fun and that are sustainable in our lives. Yep. Ah, sustainable is a good word for you. Does it mean uh, also FIBA was keep strict with decisions uh, because it's not really our decisions? Do you agree? Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So uh, you all uh, okay? And if we think about the long term, um, how we uh, stay? Uh, with this decision in the long term. Okay, I thought I thought about it, and uh, I I wrote, I already wrote some of my goals, and I believe that it's it's too good goal. Yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> it's not so side tell. Okay, and then how I can keep uh, all this decision in the long term? What do you recommend to me? Yeah, that's so important to, to really ask yourself. Um, so one big key here really is really setting good um, expectations for yourself. So most people have this what's called false hope syndrome, meaning they set these giant goals for themselves where it's just unrealistic they're actually going to achieve them and sort of hope they're going to happen, right? They hope that magically somehow their business is going to take off or they're going to get into the shape of their lives without any work. And really, you know, they do this off times on January 1st when we're so inspired, we're motivated, If you're yeah. saying this year is going to be it, right? But we don't think about our future self. I mean, we don't think about you know in a week from now when mm-hmm. I get back home from work on a random Thursday evening. I'm exhausted. I may be frustrated. I'm tired, and my goal says, "Well, I want to run a marathon this year." Well, will I actually feel like working out then? And yeah. chances are, you know, you won't, right? And so, really taking that into consideration, really asking yourself, like, how am I actually going to feel a week from now, a month from now, with actually doing this, is really key. And so, people really dramatically underestimate the, you know, the amount of effort and energy that they will have to put in week after week and month after month. Mm-hmm. And so, that's the first really big key. Mm-hmm. Um, is it also all related with the each other? New month, new Monday, new week, uh, new year. So, we always try to find the right time but maybe there is not right time <laughs> yes that is such a phenomenal point there is no right time to make changes in your life so whether you set your new year's resolutions on january 1st or whether now 20 year 20 <laughs> days later on january 21st you want to make a change in your life then today right now in fact in this very moment is the right moment for that you know we always keep postponing things into the future thinking that you know in some point in the future i will feel more motivated thinking that hey to Tomorrow when I wake up, I'll finally feel like studying. I'll finally feel like working out. But the fact is, like motivation doesn't just show up from nowhere. We generally have to create it ourselves. Yeah, I I also hear a lot of uh, from the people. I'm not ready. Yeah. Uh, uh, maybe they don't feel enough confident about it, or maybe they don't uh, feel enough um, motivated, as you say. But there is always. Um, Excuses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Lots of them. laughs> uh, yeah, we also do, of course. Mm-hmm. I have also a uh, kind of wish list or goals and um, uh, sometimes I just postpone it. I would like to do it. I would like to do it. But when? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, maybe we can go with another song and then continue with the topic. What do you think? Sounds great. After the two songs, we are here again. Uh, how is going for you, Max? Fantastic, loving this, do you? <laughs> And do you like the our do you like our songs? Yes, for sure, love them. Mm. Okay, uh, let's go a little bit deeper. <laughs> What can we do uh, to actually stick to our good intentions? So one of the biggest and most effective things that you can do is simply write down your goals every single day. So I'm actually conducting. Uh, sorry, yes. I cut, but single day. Every single day. Mm. Yes, exactly. I'm actually conducting some research on this right now, as you know, as in regards to how it affects our, you know, how our inspiration on a daily basis. But really, what research has shown so far is that when we write down our goals and really visualize them, you know, simply closing our eyes and in our minds, essentially creating a mental movie of what it's going to look like to achieve that goal. Mm-hmm. So sort of going, you know, forward, you know, three months from now, a year from now, five years from now, when you finally achieve that big goal and really stepping into that moment and feeling as if you're there already. Mm-hmm. And on the other hand, then visualizing the daily process. So visualize yourself, you know, actually going out and running if that's your goal or mm-hmm. visualize yourself, 
you know, going out and, and studying for three hours and really sticking to it, right? Or or staying strong when you're tempted by, you know, alcohol or sweet mm-hmm. foods, whatever it is. And so the reason this is powerful and effective is really because it imprints, you know, writing this down every day really imprints this deeper in our mind. You know, mm-hmm. we as human beings, we have an average of 60,000 thoughts every single day. And it's- most people spend more time thinking about the Kardashians or Spongebob <laughs> then think about their, their own goals and their own lives, right? Most people know more about their favorite celebrity than it's they study true. themselves. It's and true. So, yeah, so writing it down every day, you know, what is your vision for, you know, health, for example, for your relationships, for, you know, your business? What do you want to impact today? You know, what do you want to do today also? How are you going to make that vision come true? Simply writing this down every morning is really a great way to create more awareness every day around those goals. And then really get more motivated and more inspired because now you see, you know, this is what I would achieve, right? You focus your brain again, away from all of the distractions that this world has to offer today. You really focus it monomaniacally on the one thing or the few things in your life that are truly important and that truly matter. But isn't it make also pressure to ourselves if I write every day my goals and uh, if it's especially if it's the big goals I cannot uh, access in the one day or one week. I need longer process. I need patience. And then I write it every day. But maybe it makes me also uh, set or uh, pressure. What do you think about it? Yeah, that's a phenomenal question. And so I think the first thing to understand is that Yeah, when we set these really long-term goals, right? Three years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, that seems so unattainable in a moment. What we want to do then is really break them down in smaller milestones. So for example, when I coach people to run marathons, I've got a whole group, I'm training them in the running, right? And they're training for the Munich Marathon this year, which hopefully is going to happen. And so mm-hmm. what we do there really is we scale it down, right? So none of them right now are able to actually run the marathon. So to them right now, this is absolutely crazy, right? And thinking about this, it's really frustrating. It's yeah. terrifying almost. Right? Exactly. So we, we did really, so we broke it down. We said, hey, in May, we're going to run the first half marathon. You know, a couple of months earlier, we're going to run first 10K and 5K, right? We, we really started scaling it down because in that way, you always have a little bit, you know, a little mountaintop that you can reach before that bigger mountaintop that you ultimately want to get to. Mm-hmm. And so really setting these milestones mm-hmm. can be super important for You know, keeping our motivation and at the same time what you mentioned is pressure can also really be positive because sometimes in life we need to put that pressure on ourselves if we want to grow in fact that's the only way to really get you know to the next level of our lives is if we put some pressure on ourselves if we accept the fact that yeah all growth in life and also our biggest you know sense of happiness and fulfillment is really dependent upon our ability to go and seek discomfort Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's true. It's really important to divide it, split it, and then maybe it also shows us, oh, I, I, I did this today. Uh, so you are, you did something exactly. from your part of your goal. Maybe not whole, but you are closer. That's really important. Yeah, yeah that's such an important key point. Um, in fact, Teresa Amabile from Harvard University has done some research on this. Mm-hmm. What she has found is the single biggest motivational force at work for people is progress towards meaningful goals. So the you know the days where people feel most excited and most engaged at work are actually those days when they say, "Hey, today I got a little closer to that really big and really important goal of mine." And so tracking that progress, whether it's you know for runners writing down how many kilometers you run you know every day and every week whether it's tracking how much you know you meditate how much you study how much you get better at a certain skill the more we really get focused on our progress and how far we've already come instead of always just thinking about how far do i have to go it's still so far away the more we really feel a sense of confidence and competence in our lives which really then leads to more motivation you know leading into the future Mm-hmm. Um, I would like to also back again to the uh, our goals. Um, is it is it all uh, to achieve for healthier and happier living? What do you think about it? Yeah, great question. I think at the end of the day, we all in virtually everything that we do seek happiness. 
So whether it's the drug addict, you know, taking you know, drugs, whether it's a smoker, whether we go for a run, whether we go meditate, whether we go study, whether we achieve this big goal in our dreams, whether we chase after things in our lives, buy this car or this house, or try to find a new person that we think will fulfill us, we always do things in the pursuit of this thing called happiness. But can I ask one yeah. thing about, do you think all of this makes us happy, like buying buy buying a house or car or being in a relationship uh, with a beautiful woman or a handsome guy do you think is all of this makes us happy great question not at all so what research has shown is that there's this principle called hedonic adaptation which basically means that our brain is really good at adapting mm -hmm. to static circumstances in your life so when for example even you know there's been research that shows that when lottery right they win these you know million dollars you know 10 million dollars right and you're so happy right you've made it to the top of the world you think but a couple months later your day-to-day -day happiness will be back to normal Mm -hmm. And for all of our listeners, you know, you've probably had this experience multiple times in your life exactly. where you've bought in your car, you as a kid, you finally got that, you know, soccer ball or finally those, yep. you know, new cool shoes and you were so excited, you were jumping up and down for the first day or two or three. But then a week later or months later, we've already accepted these things as normal in our lives and we start to really take them for granted. Yeah. This is really important to keep in mind because so many times we chase these goals thinking that if I finally achieve this, I'll be happy without realizing that happiness really is the process of going towards these goals. It's the mm -hmm. journey that one every single day. Yeah, uh, I don't know if you agree as well. There is, I think there is no limit about this as well. There is always more expensive car. There is always... Um, more beautiful person so uh, there is no limit so maybe we need to also uh, see what we really need not like uh, just for the expensive car which car you need yeah which is type of equipment you need That is absolutely right. So I collaborate a lot with Olympic champions, with leading CEOs. Um, a couple months ago, I talked to Mo Goddard, for example. He's the former chief business officer of Google X, right? He was, you know, at this one point, you know, he was making multiple millions a year. He had, you know, he told me 18 cars in his garage at one point. 18, 18. cars. <laughs> And he was miserable. He told me he was so miserable. He was depressed. He was hating his life. But he kept buying new cars. He kept buying, you know, Rolls Royces online and, and having them delivered to his house thinking, hey, if I finally get one more car, this new really cool Ferrari, then I'm going to be happy. And he told me that like even that did not mm -hmm. make us happy because finding external things and trying to bring them in our lives to fill up this inner void because of our wrong thinking, because negative and limiting um, mm -hmm. thought patterns and emotions and belief systems does simply not work. Yep, that's that's great, Maxia. Yeah. Uh, do, do you want to give a break with uh, one of the songs which you pick? Sounds great, let's do this. After Büyük Ev Ablukada, we are here with Max and continue our uh, talk. Yeah, Max. Uh, where we were. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about how to really make these changes last. And so we talked about goal setting, writing down these goals, actually visualizing them every day. And so another key aspect I want to mention here is really starting out small. Mm -hmm. There's this friction cost to everything that we do so whenever we start to you know incorporate new habits in our lives whether it's i want to go running every day i want to start meditating i want to start studying i want to be a little bit more nice i want to be a little bit more happy every day there's this friction in the beginning and it takes a lot of willpower motivation and energy to just get started and so the biggest mistake that people make is they try to go all out right from the start i mean they say oh every day now i'm gonna go to the gym for two Two hours right and whenever people say this and they're so motivated and so inspired I know that it's not gonna last I know in like a week or two they're probably gonna give up because this willpower and motivation is not gonna last over the long run and so one of the most powerful things that we can do to really make change last is actually starting small so usually what I suggest to my one-on-one -on -one clients for example is when they're trying to start you know exercising regularly or meditating I say hey start with like one minute or two or three maybe mm -hmm. something that was really easy so you know laughably almost right because you think well what is you know three minutes of running gonna do to me nothing right and that's true 
true in the beginning. Physiologically, nothing is going to change, but you start to rewire your brain. You're literally building these new neural networks in your brain that are associated with that behavior. And so the more often you go running, even if it's just for three minutes, just once around the block, it becomes easier for your brain to say, hey, I'm a runner. Well, I go running every day. Mm -hmm. And then over time, once that is easy, we can scale up. We can say, well, today I'm going to run five minutes and then 10 and 15 and 20. But really starting small is one of the best things that we can do to really make change last. Yeah, and uh, and also, as you mentioned before, if something happens in our life long term, we easily adapt uh, that situation. Yes. That means if I go to run for uh, three minutes in the beginning, probably after one or two weeks, uh, these three minutes uh, are not enough for me. I would like to do more. Exactly. So then automatically I start to run maybe five minutes and then seven minutes, then 10 minutes. So probably in the time I will have a five key or six key. Um, of course, not in the one w in one week, but probably in the long term, I will be there. That's exactly right, uh, Dugu. And, and so research really shows that on average it takes 66 days to form a new habit and really make it automatic in our lives. Mm -hmm. And the reason this is important is because we need to plan for that. We need to allow the time, you know, in order for these you know, mental and you know, really brain changes to occur. And when people say, oh, I'm just going to go all out for a month from now, right? And they start to really give it the all for a month and then quit. They simply haven't given the process enough time for it to actually affect their brain and really re, you know, rewire the brain to yep. you know, make space for this new habit. And so what you really want to do is want to plan for the long run, meaning mm -hmm. we want to start so small that we can actually sustain it for 66 days and you know, then even longer throughout our lives. Uh, it's a really good point. You say 66 days because uh, we know there is a one number 21. <laughs> ah, yes, big man, the big man. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not true that's mean 21. No, exactly. So this is actually a big myth that came up in the 1950s and 60s um, from this neurosurgeon over in the US, uh, Maxwell Melt, who yeah. wrote a book called Psycho-Cybernetics in which he was talking sort of about how people adapt to plastic surgeries. So what he noticed yeah. in his work was that when people, for example, got a new nose or you know, had something about their face changed, it took them an average of 21 days or three weeks, he said, to really get used to, you know, seeing a new face in a mirror but that is a very different thing from actually building new habits in our lives and it really wasn't a scientific study mm -hmm. and so the university college of london has shown that it takes on average really 66 days depending on how hard the behavior is so i see that so that's mean uh, it's 66 day if it's not still habit for us we have to continue it doesn't mean uh, we are a failure exactly exactly that's that's a great point um, 66 days is no magical number. In fact, the time was anywhere from three weeks to eight months in their research mm -hmm. because, you know, for example, hey, if I say, well, every time after I brush my teeth, I want to also floss them. Well, that's a really easy habit to build on our lives. But yeah. if we say, well, I want to run every day, right? If I want to, you know, study for three hours every day, those habits are a lot harder to build. They take a lot more time and energy and willpower. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, it's going to take a lot longer. And yeah. so really the basic idea here is change takes a long time time we really want to plan for that and make sure that we don't run out of the energy and motivation by trying to go too hard too fast mm -hmm. that's a great point thank you max and um uh, we have some question from the listener great let's dive right in yeah i would like to ask that question um okay people uh, people who have uh, maybe clinical depression or other problems major depression how uh, to set goals uh, for people who have it difficult to make a step. Do you have any other suggestion for these people? Yeah, great question. And so the first thing I really got to say here is, you know, if you're actually struggling with mental health problems, the first step is always getting professional help. So it's always seeing a psychiatrist, doctor, whatever is, you know, appropriate in that case. Um, but that being said, there's still a lot of things you can do in your life. And the first one, I, I really want to go back to the starting out small, because especially, you know, people are struggling really hard. Um, it's, it's very hard to just get started, to just get yourself out of bed and do anything productive 
productive really with our lives because if we're not in a good space mentally it's very hard to function and really thrive in our lives and mm -hmm. so the first thing we want to do is really start out small right and like set these small goals every single day and that can be as simple as hey today i'm gonna meet a friend of mine for you know coffee or for a walk outside right now or have a phone call or it might be hey i'm just gonna you know do something good i'm gonna tidy and clean the house today or i'm gonna listen to some music i'm gonna read a good book i'm gonna you know read some inspiring messages or, or listen to podcasts like this and mm -hmm. really get some positive information but yeah. really starting small is one of the key aspects and then also what you want to do is you want to reward yourself for that i mean when you do these positive steps you know especially people are really struggling with depression or anxiety they're oftentimes very self-critical and so you really want to reward yourself anytime that you do something good you can give yourself this you know <laughs> mental high five right you want to say hey yeah. yes great job like i'm proud of myself for having done the thing because it rewards you and when your brain feels rewarded it's most likely going to repeat the behaviors again and again and it's so the self-talk here really is key then yeah do you also believe that exercise can be a big part of healing the process for someone uh, with uh, clinical depression or uh, or measured depression like mental health problem let's say Because yes, absolutely. So of course, it's not going to be the only step. Um, and again, mm -hmm. I want to you know highlight the, the psychiatrist or mental health practitioner, or whatever. But exercise is a phenomenal mood booster for people in general. So specifically, what it does when you you know walk outside, you go for a run, you go for a swim, you play some soccer, tennis. What happens then is endorphins and serotonin are released, yep. which are really responsible for this feeling of happiness and joy in our life. So serotonin is you know found in you know um is really found in most antidepressant drugs. And so really, you know, by, you know, going out for an exercise, we get these natural mood boosters. At the same time, cortisol, the stress hormone is decreased, meaning we feel less stressed, more happy, more joyful, more, you know, present again. And so it's really one of the greatest things that we can do for mental health, energy, and happiness in life. Mm -hmm. And I have another question from our listeners as well. Uh, is laziness a choose or genetic trait? <laughs> <laughs> It's a great question. <laughs> yeah, that is a great question. Um, so if we look at the science, um, it is partly a genetic trait. Oh. But with that being said, that is no excuse. And we talked about excuses before, right? <laughs> that should be no excuse exactly. for you not to do something. Because even if it's partly genetic, that still means that you can change it. You can improve it. And that's really what the research shows through right mental techniques, mm -hmm. through mental training, through you know practicing, getting into discomfort, practicing, you know overcoming this through again, you know t making small steps, asking yourself what's the one minute I can do, right? So really taking these small steps, we can overcome this. And that really is key and it really comes down to belief systems. Mm -hmm. Because if you tell yourself that hey, uh, it's genetic, I'm I'm born lazy, my you know parents were lazy, my grandparents were lazy, I'm always going to be this way, well then you're not going to make any effort to try to change mm -hmm. and the one great truth about the human brain is it is plastic meaning from the day we're born until the day we die your brain will rewire and change itself exactly. every single day depending on the demands that we place upon it. So when we you know, study something new, when we try something new, a new skill, a new you know, quality in our lives, we get better at that. We literally build new neural networks and actually strengthen them. Mm -hmm. And so overcoming procrastination and you know, showing up with self-discipline is mm -hmm. just like any other skill. The more you practice it, the more you strengthen those associated neural networks in the brain and essentially become better at overcoming that. Yeah, it's really important to remind ourselves. Yes, the choice is always yours. Exactly. Um, and I would like to go for the last question uh, from me again. Okay. <laughs> Because it's already 54. We yeah, have six all good minutes. Come to an end. <laughs> yes, uh, time flies. <laughs> um, you also give the coaching programs. Do you. Uh, do you recommend people to making uh, New Year's resolutions? I, uh, um, if yes, why? If no, why? <laughs> if you are in the middle, why? <laughs> Absolutely. So, so again, I don't necessarily think of New Year's resolutions. I think about goals in general in life. And study after study shows that when you have goals in your life, you're happier, you're more productive, you're healthier, and you're more successful in your life. Because if we don't have goals, mo you know, what happens really is we, we lack a purpose. We like meaning in our lives because we don't know what we're actually here for. We don't know where we're actually going. And so 
so if, you know people struggle oftentimes it's because they don't have a clear vision for their life they don't have clear goals where they want to say hey i want to do this thing or i want to pursue this because the process of doing that would actually excite me and if we don't have that then we're going to miss out on life you know one of my favorite authors robin sharma said that the purpose of life is a life of purpose <laughs> at the end of the day, I like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> at the end of the day, it's really about asking yourselves every single day, how can I live in alignment with who I want to be today? Mm -hmm. How can I become a little bit better? How can I grow a little bit more? How can I impact the world a little bit more? How can I, you know, get a little bit closer to where I want to be and who I want to be? Mm -hmm. Because in doing that, we we'll really get this sense of purpose and meaning in our lives, and that we we'll live happier lives and also feel more motivated and inspired to actually achieve the goals or New Year's resolutions yeah. that we have. Yeah, so uh, I think this summary of the, our program as well, it's really important to setting the goals, purpose, uh, setting goals um, or aims for uh, our life, but it doesn't have to be next Monday, next month or <laughs> next year. So do it. Uh, whenever yeah. <laughs> you decide it, <laughs> maybe don't wait uh, uh, until you're ready, until you're motivated. Do it when you decide about the about your goal, right? Exactly. Today is that day. And really, this is the moment that you can use right now in order to, if you don't have a vision yet, create a vision, sit down for a couple minutes or maybe even the rest of the night and really start writing down. What do you actually want out of life? How do you want your day to day life to look like? What do you want in your health, your relationships, your business, whatever it is? Yeah. Because in creating that clarity, first of all, we raise our motivation and mm -hmm. then we really want to break it down. Ask myself, how can I get a little bit better today? Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot, Max. It was great to talk with you. Thank you so much. Yeah, uh, it was great to have you here. Uh, it's a pleasure for us. And we have just three minutes. Uh, I will give the microphone to next show. Sounds great. Uh, hope to see you again in our studio. Oh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we wish you a good evening uh, and um, happy Thursday evening. Uh, happy new f year. Happy new weekend uh, to our listeners. And thanks a lot to listen to us and ask the questions. Do Thank you, you guys. Say <laughs> maybe one, two sentences to our listeners makes. Well, yeah, really. Um I fundamentally believe that if we take control of our day-to-day -day lives, then the long-term goals are going to really take care of themselves. And so really want to make sure you start right now. You don't wait for, you know, tomorrow or next week or next month, but you can start right now in this very moment to make the changes that you really want to see in your life. Okay. Thanks a lot, Max. Thank you. Istanbul. Bitte. <laughs>